sort of run past the time. I'll just do a real quick one. I'll do this, uh, the coho bugger, the pattern that I, that I fished that uh, is very effective. If you guys fish for coho on the beaches, uh, this, this was, <laughs> I'm sure you guys all must. <laughs> But, but this, this pattern, uh, when I fished here for the Nationals, um, this, this was a pattern that I caught coho and cutthroat on the beach with. Uh, again, it's a pattern that I have a, a ton of confidence in, and uh, maybe that could be a part of the factor why it works so well for me, but you can tie it either with a gold head or else you can tie it with a, a chartreuse bead. Uh, I personally like to, to tie this one if I'm going to be fishing in shallower water just with a, with a gold bead, but chartreuse if I'm going to fish a bit deeper or maybe in darker conditions. So for this pattern, I'm going to switch over the thread to... Uh, to olive. Um, you can tie this with either for the tail, you can either use rabbit or else you can use marabou. A lot of people use marabou on their uh, woolly buggers and patterns like this. But I personally, I find rabbit to be a more effective or more to my liking just because it's more durable, it's easier to work with, and uh, it, it moves, in my opinion, a bit nicer in water at times. This is the same Mustad hook. It's a 3X, 2XL. It's a... Uh, size 8. The number of this hook here, if you're curious, it's uh, this is a 9671, very common hook. Now for the tail on this one, as I mentioned, I'm going to use rabbit. Uh, the way I buy it, I buy the dark rabbit, I buy it in the strips. Uh, in this case, if you look at the actual material, it might be hard to see in this lighting, but the tips are actually darker than the, the majority of it. Uh, I've used patterns or marabou or I've used other rabbit strips where they don't have a darker tip but for some reason I, I can't explain it other than maybe it's a confidence again but it works very well for me if I use the ones that actually have that bit of contrast in the tail with the darker tip on it. So I'm going to make a tail that's going to be typically one and a half to two times the, the size of the gap of the hook. Secure this on here. Make sure it all stays in place. And it doesn't have to be a hugely bushy tail, but you want enough on there that it's got some substance to it. And again, I'm going to put uh, Crystal Flash on it. And for the, uh, for the sides, again, I'm going to put three strands on each side. Try to hold them on there and get them to stay where I want it to be and bring it down the other side with three. And then just trim off the excess so it's about the same length as the tail itself again. Okay, the, the body material that I use, you can buy all sorts of different chenilles. This one here, a Palmer chenille. They make other products that look similar to this, but they're quite dense. They're already pre-spun. This one here, as you notice, the main thing that you're going to see with this is that it, it, it's similar to the other ones. It's primarily on one side or the other. It, it's not on both sides of this. So the, the benefit with it using this one is that it's a lot more sparse. Now, you don't want to just put it on and then pull it back on your own because it gives it a real funny look. You want to try to... Uh, palm wear this yourself or, or spin it to try and get a bit better effect which I'll just show you in a second so I'm just going to bring the thread forward and tie it off here again let it hang in this case typically for a hook this size I'll use six inches of this clip it off uh, find my uh, my hackle pliers just grab a hold of the end of it and you can either let this hang and spin it or you can use a spinning tool which I use it just makes it nice, but you, as you can see as I'm spinning it's starting to go around from side to side so I've got a bit more control over it. I don't want it as thick as what they sell it as because I find that that is way too thick. When you try and build a body with it, it just clumps up and it becomes a bit too dense. So now with this 
spun to the, to the point where I think it's nice and even and it's not that thick. I'm just going to slowly wrap and rotate this forward. Uh, but the key with this too is as you're bringing it forward, it's just to making sure that each wrap is laying beside the, the, the previous wrap. You don't want to have it so there's a big gap or else you're going to have the materials lying different ways. But you'll notice that the majority of it wants to flare back. Some of the fibers are going to go forward, but as you bring your next wraps over it, they're going to bury it. So all you're going to really see are ones that are sticking sideways or sticking towards the back, which is exactly what we want. So once you have this up towards the eye, just give it an extra spin or two again. And this will help in the case of uh, keeping that bead a little more secure too if you haven't built up the thread, which I didn't this time. Just bring it around and then cut this off. But if you've ever tried to tie a pattern similar to this and you buy the, the chenille that's already pre-spun, you'll see what I mean. They're, they're very, very thick and it just doesn't look right. And it's really hard to make the fibers to lay back. Whereas this one, once I've secured the bead, I can just turn around and uh, pinch it down and move it back. In some cases, if I'm using a bigger bead like uh, 3 16 so I'll actually take and dub some some uh, olive green dubbing on here on the thread so when I do the knot the threads all buried within that but overall you want to have the thread so it's going to sit below the bead so if a fish bites it's going to be quite protected from uh, the actual teeth of the fish again. Pardon me? The body is the chenille. The, 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 it is. The, it's, it's all olive and as you're spinning it, what you see underneath, this is a nice effect that you get with this too, if I move the light, you'll see the body underneath, there is no body, it's the actual chenille, but it's the thread that's wrapped, but it's very sparkly, very shiny underneath. If you tie this, just sort of pinch it again and, and push the fibers back, you can spend a bit of time and you can really manipulate it to go how you want. If you tie this, uh, they make the same product in just a straight pearl. Just put a pearl flash, a completely pearl flash tail on it, make it long, and if you have a gold bead on it, if you ever work it through the water and take a look at it, it'll be one of the most sparkly flies that you'll see that you can make. It's probably the closest thing to a, a proper flasher that we can get. But again, that'll give you an idea. But this is a pattern, as I said, for when it comes to coho fishing or even lake fishing, very effective, and I use that. It's one of my uh, confidence flies that I'll go to. But uh, thank you all, and uh, that concludes it, but I appreciate your time.